everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic.com and it's Friday so that means, well it means various things, it means that wrestlers of the week will be going up soon because it's my favourite time of the week but also it means that there's lots of wrestling news to talk about from various different sources, various different parts of the business from WWE to AEW and beyond. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at those lovely headlines. First of all, the original plans for Becky Lynch before her pregnancy announcement have been revealed. Next up, Brody Lee has publicly commented on the similarities between his own character and that of Vince McMahon. And finally, The Rock is set to star in an upcoming movie to be released on Netflix. So, let's talk about those Becky Lynch plans that were in place before she announced that she was pregnant. So, first of all, Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer has noted that apparently the Raw after Mania was taped before Becky knew that she was pregnant. And that explains the whole segment on that Raw when she seemed to be keeping the program, the feud with Shayna Baszler alive. On that show, she referenced her victory over Shayna Baszler at WrestleMania the night before, which if you remember rightly, came as a bit of a shock to everybody. Everyone seemed to think that Shayna would be beating Becky uh, to take that Raw Women's Championship. But instead, Becky kind of rolled her up and got a what can be perceived perhaps as a bit of a lucky victory. So it seems like the original plan was indeed a continuation of that feud with Shayna Baszler, but not without Becky facing another opponent along the way. And that story kind of changes how Money in the Bank would have looked quite considerably. Apparently Becky was set to defend the title in a singles match against Nia Jax at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, which would I guess explain why Nia was being billed up as this big dominant singles star in the build-up to that pay-per-view. But reportedly Becky was set to retain the title against Nia at Money in the Bank and it would be Shayna Baszler who was going to win the women's briefcase, thereby continuing naturally her feud with the champion. But instead we all know what happened. Nia appeared in the Money in the Bank ladder match, which Asuka won and then the next on Raw, Becky of course announced her pregnancy and revealed that in winning the briefcase, Asuka had actually won the Raw Women's Championship. So now we have Asuka as champion and we're wondering what's going to happen next, who's she going to face? I wonder if this story could be a bit of a clue because it seems as though despite for whatever reason not putting her over at WrestleMania, WWE are still invested in pushing Shayna Baszler. So could we see a feud between Shayna and Asuka leading to a big, you have to say a bit of a dream title match between the two given their respective NXT histories or will we see it be someone else? Personally I am hugely in favour of the possibility of an Asuka versus Baszler match. I think that would be wonderful. I think they've got all the storyline to play off from their backgrounds. They both had legendary NXT Women's Championship reigns and I think that it would be a really good match as well. I think that both women would match up really nicely. But that all remains to be seen and of course with SummerSlam, the next big show looming on the horizon, that might mean that Asuka faces a few different superstars in the build-up before she faces whoever she's going to face for that title at the big show. Please let it be Shayna. I'm not biased. I just think it will be really lovely. Next up, now obviously we don't know when Becky's going to return to the ring and very, very obviously the priority right now is not even on her return to the ring at all. It's on her pregnancy and it's on being a mother, which makes total sense and nobody can argue with that. But in terms of the far future, Becky has teased a potential confrontation one day with a certain legend's daughter on Twitter. And the person in question is none other than Simone Johnson. That's right, the daughter of the Rock. Now, as you may know, Simone Johnson is currently training at the Performance Center. She seems to be eyeing a future in the business, following in her father's footsteps. And she did a bit of a Q&A on Twitter last night. There she was answering various questions and in doing so, revealing her admiration of many wrestlers in WWE at the moment, many women's wrestlers especially. She was asked who she'd like to face from NXT UK. She said Kaylee Ray. Uh, someone asked her if she was a big Naomi fan. She said always. Uh, someone said, would you like to face Ember Moon in the future? She said, yes, absolutely. But when somebody asked her who would be your dream one-on-one -on -one opponent, she replied saying Becky Lynch. And Becky responded to this simply saying one day. Uh, now obviously this depends on a lot of things. The fact that both will still be wrestling whenever they potentially cross paths. The, the fact that, you know, Simone's development goes as WWE are hoping and hopefully she does turn out to be really good. Uh, but if so, I mean that would be cool, wouldn't it? You could argue it's like a clash between one of the most popular female superstars in wrestling ever versus the daughter of one of the most popular superstars in wrestling ever. It's a big clash just even on paper, isn't it? Even without having seen Simone Johnson wrestle. Now, of course, I'm not taking this too seriously, but it's nice to see Becky giving props to a young trainee and it's nice to see Simone have a lot of ambition. So hopefully we do see it one day. I don't know. There's a, I feel silly speculating on something that might not even happen, but 
It was a nice little Twitter moment, wasn't it? Next up, what's going on with Sting? Now, I don't mean in terms of just the man himself, because I've always found him a bit of a weird character. Sometimes he's all painted up, sometimes he, you know, he went through that phase of trying to be like the Joker once, but I don't mean like that. I mean, what's going on with Sting in relation to AEW? Because it was recently revealed that Sting is no longer under a WWE contract, and everyone was a little bit confused by that, and then, of course, the speculation started that Sting could possibly be turning up in All Elite Wrestling. Well, Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Was Ever newsletter has speculated upon this and reported his findings, or lack thereof, which is telling in its own way. Meltzer says that he has reached out to AEW to try and work out if they are possibly thinking of booking Sting in some capacity, and apparently he was given no answer. Now that might just sound like a non-story, but Meltzer then pointed out, if AEW weren't planning to use Sting, usually he'd expect the promotion to tell him well, we're, no, we're just not using them to just, you know, squash the speculation immediately. But the fact that AEW have not given Meltzer an answer could imply that Sting is indeed in their sights. There were rumours in the build-up to Double or Nothing, of course, that Sting would be the man to present either Cody or Lance Archer, whoever wins that eventual match, uh, with the TNT Championship. But, of course, it was recently revealed this week on Dynamite that it'll actually be Mike Tyson doing the honours. So I wonder what capacity we'll see Sting in. Uh, AEW have been really good at involving legends and, and veteran figures of the scene without really allowing it to overshadow their current stars. They've been doing a really good job of that and clearly it's a conscious decision they've made. From, you know, people accompanying Cody to the ring to various different veterans taking various different managerial roles uh, to just involving people like the Great Muta as a judge in a title match. It's all very well thought out and it's always... They always utilise these legends in a limited capacity, which I think is the right way to go. So you have to assume that if Sting does come into AEW, it will be in a similar vein. And we don't even know really whether it will be for a one-off appearance, like Bret Hart, of course, at last year's Double or Nothing, or whether it will be in a more sustained role, similar to, for example, Arn Anderson or Jake the Snake Roberts. I mean, we don't really even know if Sting still feels comfortable wrestling. He's not as old as some of those guys I've mentioned, but he did retire from the ring, so I don't know if he'd be getting involved or not. It's very exciting, though, to speculate on the possibilities, especially since, as Meltzer points out, AEW just kept quiet about it, so maybe it is going to happen. There has been a slight update to the Double or Nothing card as well, and then after that I'll run through all the matches that we can expect to see so far, but the change is that one more competitor has been announced for that Casino Ladder match. So we already knew that set to compete in that match were Darby Allin, Cole Cabana, Orange Cassidy and Phoenix, and now Scorpio Sky of SCU has also been added to the equation. That leaves us with four more names yet to be announced for that ladder match, and the winner of course will receive a big title shot. Now let's run through the rest of the show. John Moxley, the AEW World Champion, taking on Brody Lee, of course, but Brody Lee has the physical belt in his possession. What an evil man. Uh, the TNT Championship Tournament Finals, Cody versus Lance Archer, which, as I mentioned, uh, will result in Mike Tyson presenting the winner with the belt. Uh, a no count out, no DQ match for the AEW Women's Championship between Nyla Rose, the champion, and Ikara Shida, the challenger. The stadium stampede match, of course, between the Elite and Matt Hardy and the Inner Circle. That looks to be very exciting as well. Darby Allen, no, Darby in the ladder match we've just talked about. Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander, MJF versus Jungle Boy, and on the pre-show, a number one contenders tag team match between Private Party and the Best Friends. Now, speaking of AEW, and speaking of that title match that's coming up between Brody Lee and the champion John Moxley, Brody Lee has actually publicly spoken out about, well, you know, the thing that's on everyone's mind. That is the fact that his character in AEW seems to exhibit personality traits that many people have reported over the years are very like Vince McMahon because all these weird stories emerge of Vince not liking sneezing, you know, the way that he has his steak, his certain behavioural traits and Brody Lee incorporated a lot of these especially into his first few promos with AEW. And Brody Lee has talked about this in a recent interview with Busted Open Radio saying there was no motivation to parry Vince McMahon. He said, nothing was intentional. I have no reason to hate WWE, no reason to hate Vince McMahon, nothing like that. I happen to be a fan of mafia movies, so that's the way the character was portrayed for me. You people can take it however you want. And while I do firmly believe that Brody is telling the truth when he says he doesn't hate WWE and he doesn't hate Vince McMahon, I'm not sure I believe him when he's saying that there's zero inspiration from Vince McMahon in that AEW character. I mean, it was the thing on everyone's mind when he was first, you know, getting his cronies in the meeting room and uh, insisting that he be addressed as Mr. and insisting that he eats first and then one of them sneezes and he's just so angry at them. 
It's everything we've heard about Vince McMahon over the years. And in fairness, as the weeks have gone on, you know, those overtly Vince McMahon aspects of the character have been tuned down slightly. They have been lessened, I suppose. Uh, and we've seen more of that, as Brody Lee mentions, that more mafioso-style, ruthless leader character come out without the little quirks and the McMahon-esque foibles. But at the same time, they were there. They were there at the start, weren't they? And they were very overt. In fact, I think AEW started attracting a bit of criticism online for just how overt it was. We wanted to see more of Brody Lee, the character, than this sort of Vince McMahon parody. And luckily, that's what's happened since. So yeah, I don't know if I believe Brody Lee in this interview. I feel like he maybe just pretended. I don't know. Make up your mind yourselves. But surely, surely the Vince McMahon aspect was there early on. And finally, The Rock is set to star in a superhero movie alongside Emily Blunt in the making entitled Ball and Chain. According to Hollywood Report, the movie is now set to come out on Netflix, which means that given the recent stay of things during lockdown, given the popularity of Tiger King, given the fact that I and many other people I've seen are getting into community for the first time because it's gone up on Netflix recently, given the way that Netflix is, you never know what's going to be a success on there because anything can just catch on and just take off. And, and maybe this Ball and Chain movie with Dwayne The Rock Johnson could be the next big thing. You never, you never know. And it's got The Rock in it, and he's a huge name. Now, Ball and Chain was already known to be in the works, but the news here is that it's been sold to Netflix. But personally, I hadn't actually heard about Ball and Chain before that. So, if you're like me and you want to know a little bit more about it, listen up right now. The movie is based on a 90s comic book of the same name by Scott Lobdell, a four-part series, and it follows a troubled married couple that receives superpowers that only work when they're together. So I think the gist of it is they were planning to separate, then a meteor strikes or something, and then they both get superpowers and they have to stay together because that's when their powers are most effective. But The Rock and Emily Blunt are executive producers on this movie, and Oscar nominee Emily V. Gordon is writing the script. So very exciting times if you're a fan of, you know, quirky superhero movies, or indeed Dwayne The Rock Johnson, as we all are, or if you're a fan of Netflix, as lots of us are, especially over the past couple of months. And that brings us to the end of this news video. Thank you very much for watching. My recommended match of the day, I guess we should choose one where The Rock looks like a bit of a superhero, shouldn't we? And what better bout to represent The Rock as a mega hero than that Survivor Series 2001 clash, the winner takes all match between Team WWF and the invading forces from WCW and ECW. Give it a watch, especially if you've never seen it, because it's a really crucial part of wrestling history, despite the fact that, as we all know, the invasion angle was a bit of a disaster. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Jack from Coldaholic.com. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Stay positive out there, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.